Hey guys and welcome to another trail preview video here in Zermatt and the surrounding area. So we are here at about 2,900 meters above sea level at the top of a trail called Liechenbretter. And this trail was actually, um, or at least part of the trail, was actually a stage in the EWS race last year, so 2019, and it's a double black diamond trail, and I'm going to attempt to ride it, and let's see how it goes. All right, here we go. So this top section was quite loose, but really flowy, nothing technical so far. Ooh, here we have some different line options. Um, I will check them out first. If you're getting to this point here on the trail, the trail opens up with many different lines. So we have one which is going down here the left side taking the corner there and here in the middle we have this rut which is a much more direct approach and then you can either choose to go down that path which is a little bit more off-road or you can keep on straight lining through this part and then down there join the other trail which is going around the left side or you can also go down this road here and then make a hard right down here and continue on on the trail over there which is going to join the other trails down there since there is nothing special about the different lines, I'm going to take the most suitable one, which is the trail here on the left side, which seems to be also the most ridden trail. Now I'm going to ride the left side trail option over here. Pretty tight corner there. And now we take a direct line into this section, which is quite steep and technical. Definitely have to control your speed there. Whoop. Got stuck on this little rock here. And on we go. So here coming in from the right side will be the trail which, or the trail option, which goes all the way to the right and then comes back again. Oh, pretty loose. I'm going to redo this section. As I am riding up to this section, um, Trying to slow down really good, control my braking since it's steep and loose and then it's not that difficult to ride this section of trail here.
just make sure you go at a speed that you're comfortable with and not go over the side of the trail. And now we continue on with our ride. So I'm opting for this route here. And then we have a little technical uphill section. My back wheel, wheel slid out completely there. was a tough section there. And here this these rock slabs are quite uh, slippery and off camber. So just make sure not to slide out. This part looks to be a bit more flowy and it's also much less steep than the previous parts. But there is also this loose chunder lying all around. So. That's exactly what happens if you slide out on these rock faces. So I almost tore off my thumbnail and this is really not so nice. All right, so after this pretty nasty crash where I unfortunately landed heavily on my right thumb, um, I'm not sure what happened to the thumb so I almost tore off the thumbnail and the entire thumb as well as the front part of my hand here is pretty um, swollen up. I took a strong painkiller just um, 15 minutes ago and I've been cooling the entire hand in 
a small river just up ahead um, also for about 15 minutes and now the hand feels a little bit better but it's still pretty painful and I'm going to attempt the rest of the trail or to ride the rest of the trail and I'll take it really slow and we'll see how it goes all right so I'm basically riding without my right thumb so holding on to the bar and the braking is quite tough but so far it seems to work more or less almost slid out there once again these rocks are really slippery Even though that was quite a bumpy ride, it went better than expected. So it seems that the painkiller is working pretty good. of loose chunder lying all around it's not the easiest to get traction in these loose rocks yep that part looks better for my thumb A little bit of uphill. Uh, so shifting is pretty much done for the day for me. I guess I no, I can't use my thumb to either shift up or down. So unless there's a tough uphill section I'm going to ride the rest of the trail in this very gear that I'm that I'm in currently
this part of the trail is much less steep, much more flowy, and the best of all, there is no more chunder lying around. So it's much easier to get single grip on the tires. Oh, here I'm going up and then inside. Just shortly wanted to enjoy the view. Um, so up here we have the Matterhorn, which is unusually without clouds at the top. And then here you can see the entire valley. And on we go. dirt here is really sandy but it's not too much sand so we can still find some good grip just have to watch out to not wash out on either the front or the back tire especially not the front Decided to go up and over. that way for me so this part which I've been riding for the last couple of minutes um, really isn't technical there's sometimes these loose rocks and overall it's been quite flowy and here we go into some more steep a little bit more technical stuff to conclude on the previous section there um, which was more open more flowy um, I wouldn't say that this part was 
um, a double black diamond section so much more of a single black diamond or sometimes even a blue trail oh, careful there on the tires or the rims really tight switchback into a short little uphill section okay since I messed up this other switchback the next one I'm going to redo it again and this time I'm trying to cut on the inside of the corner there So that was actually quite a technical section there and here again okay so I'm reattempting this technical switch back here oh, and I messed up again so I'm not going to redo this Here I decide to go up and over that rock there. Oh, nose pivot straight into a rock with the front tire. So this part here again is much more technical. There's lots of bigger rocks and very tight switchbacks and in between you have these steep sandy sections which are difficult to get traction on Hop. popping the back wheel over there So I'm putting a foot down, sliding the back wheel, and here, tight switch back, straight over a little drop off, where I had to put a foot down. This part is much less steep again and more flowy. Oh, into a tough uphill section. I just wanted to have a short look on this section here since it looked to be really technical but there seems to be quite a few reasonable lines and if you don't choose to go over the large um, rocks then it's actually probably going to be quite a smooth ride okay so after taking a closer look at the section up ahead i've decided that I'm going to choose a line that's going up over this rock here and then straight down the chute on the right side. <laughs> Sorry, I thought you were already going. switch back up ahead don't really understand these fast <laughs> oh. wow
see you. This is just a short update on the condition of my thumb. Three days after the crash has happened, so there is um, quite a large swelling going on in the tip of my thumb, as well as a pretty hefty bruise. The joints themselves still seem to work quite okay. Um, there's not as much pain going on when I'm flexing and moving around my thumb. However, um, so in general, I thought nothing would be um, broken and all the ligaments are still intact as well as the joints. However, today I figured out that probably here the front part of my thumb might be broken, so I have to get that checked out by a doctor. Today is the fourth day after the crash. As you can see, the swelling has reduced quite a lot. There is still this ugly bruise um, going on. I went to the doctor's office yesterday and they made an x-ray scan and told me that my thumb is actually broken in several places, which is quite a bummer. So as it seems, um, if I'm lucky, I will only get a cast for the next couple of weeks. And if I'm unlucky, I will have to get a surgery on the thumb.